having watched Shane Gillis' special, Beautiful Dogs, he's clear of a lot of people. He's clear of a lot of people. That guy is funny with a capital F from the start of the fucking special. I knew that special would be good from the moment it started. Why? There was no crazy back shot, hero shot that Brendan loves where he's walking through the fucking, you know, back room, green room, saying hi to all the adoring fans and shit, nodding at some of the waitresses he's probably going to bang in the toilet later. Nah, it was just Shane looking kind of awkward and nervous behind the curtains of his show with a drink in hand. I think it was a fucking pint as well, very on brand. And then the lights come up, lights go on, and he walks on stage. That's when I knew the special would be good. It just started with him on stage. No hero shot from the back. No zooming on trainers. No fucking drone shot of him driving to the venue in his fucking expensive sports car. No other professional comedians telling him how great he is and he starts crying. It's just him behind the curtain with a fucking pint in hand about to go on and fucking kill it. And he just, one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. Honestly, that joke about fucking terrorist, I cried, bro. I can't remember the last time I cried laughing over a Netflix special. That terrorism joke, you guys know if you've watched it already. I was crying at all the little bit, all the little stuff that he was punching up. I was like, I was, I was, like, you know what I mean? over <laughs> like i died i died i died bro shane is clear of all these guys he's so fucking funny it was so refreshing to watch a special that felt like a special it felt like it was some of his best material it felt like he went for it it felt like he wanted to give the crowd a good time and he did and again this is shane gillis he doesn't have a cool haircut he he basically the same complexion as a4 paper right he's a bit awkward when he walks on the stage looks a little bit ungangly and shit but when he puts that fucking mic that black cock of a mic to you know next to his lips and he starts talking and he starts telling jokes cash fucking money the guy's clear of everybody i don't care he's clear he's clear bro he's clear that was so good man that was maybe one of the best specials i've watched this year i fucking love it it was so funny like every bit of it was so funny like just just him like i don't know it was just funny just he's he's just a funny guy you listen to the pod right he's funny he listens to his guest appearances he's funny like he's not trying to lecture you about covid lecture you about working hard lecture you about how hard it is for comedians compared to other jobs lecture you about fa like nothing and think about it right refreshing as well you know people do that self-deprecating thing to kind of look like they're humble and they've got you know they've got some level of humility he's doing what you what comedians used to do where it was self-deprecating to the point where they just want you to make you laugh so anything to make you laugh they will reveal the worst secret about themselves the most embarrassing thing because they know you're gonna laugh at it they don't care about looking cool do you remember that do you remember that that used to be a thing back in the day. Back in the day, there'll be a comedian on stage saying something cr really awkward, really clunky, really crazy and out of line. But it was funny because it revealed something about that person. You're like, oh my God, I know you. I know a bit more about you. And you, it just makes you want to laugh because they, they kind of brought down, you know, they brought themselves to your level. They've humanized themselves. And the stuff he was talking about, about like missionary position, fucking belly to belly. Bro, I died. We've all been there. I fucking died. The grunts like, I fucking died. I can imagine the women in that fucking theater were crying, bro, when they heard that joke about the missionary position belly to belly. Yo, how many of us have been in that position? <laughs> you know, it was all so relatable, but it kind of was relatable to the point where it didn't make him look good, but he didn't care because it's all about the funnies. Fuck it. I'm gonna, you know what I mean? I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to like tell you how awkward I am, how weird I am, how insecure I am, how fucked up my brain is. Hopefully you guys laugh. And I laughed a lot, mate, a fucking lot. 
again, I watched this laughing on my phone with my Bluetooth headphones. And I never do that. Usually I have it on my laptop as a tab open. I walk away. I had, I was listening to it. I went into taking the jokes. I had my fucking Bluetooth headphones on and I had it playing on my phone. That's how much attention I was giving it. Honestly, man, I love it, bro. So good. It was so refreshing to listen to an actual comedian get on stage and tell jokes and not try and fucking lecture me. So check out Shane Gillis's Beautiful Dogs. It's out now on fucking Netflix. It's fucking amazing. I love it. Um, and I really fucking did enjoy every fucking part of it. Honestly, honestly, honestly did. And honestly, just check it out, please. Because especially if you watch that fucking, the other one, you know, it was terrible. So yeah, um, check it in if you can. Uh, what was it? Put in code. What's the code? What's the code? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Hell yeah, I have to watch it. Sounds good. Why we like comedy. Zaki Josie. Uh, Tim Dillon, do, it does by saying I'm a piece of shit. Excuse my nonsense. Uh, we you going to mean? Never. Back shots. <laughs> uh, mansplainer Schultz. Lols. Schultz wants to be like White Chappelle so bad. Huh. That's actually a good description of him, isn't it? Doesn't Schultz have beef with Chappelle? Or is it like, um, who's the other guy? Doesn't he not like Chappelle? He, he's always calling him out and being super critical of him, isn't it? Maybe that makes a lot of sense because he's always, un I always feel like he's unfairly harsh on Chappelle considering a lot of his friends are pretty shit at stand-up comedy. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't like it when Chappelle's overly preachy. I don't think any of us do. But that's just kind of the phase he is in life, isn't it? He just he's not gonna be there and, and be telling you fucking punchlines and shit and one liners anymore. Um he's a bit more reflective and shit, right? He's a bit more philosophical. He's always been that way, but he's leaning into it more the older he's get. But Schultz is always overly critical of that. So maybe because, you know, I always say a lot of the times if you complain about people and you overly hate something about them, it's usually because they have something about them that you kind of see in yourself. So maybe, or maybe something that you want or, uh, you know, a quality you want to exude maybe in the future. So maybe um, Uche is right there. Maybe there is a part of him that wants to be it because a, a bit of his, com his comedy is kind of like that, isn't it? It's a little bit preachy. It's a little bit obnoxious. It's a little bit, you know, too self-assured. You know, it comes from a bit of moral superiority, it's a little bit, look at me, look how smart I am, right? When he does the whole cultural stuff, like, oh, I know so much about different cultures. I know you're from this country. He's been this language. Like, all right, brother, sit down. We've all got Duolingo on our fucking phones, mate. Relax, wind your fucking neck in. Um, yeah, Uche might be right. I never thought about that. There is a bit of like, one of you white Chappelle about Schultz, isn't it? Yeah, maybe that's right. Maybe that is right. I, mean, I never, I never thought about that, but that makes a lot of sense. But why is Chappelle more likable than than Schultz? Then I don't care what Ch Chappelle does on stage, even if it does disappoint me, I still want to hear him speak. Because just he's just a, he, he's such a good communicator. He's such an interesting guy. I just want to hear him speak. I don't care, even if it's not that funny. Do you know what I mean? Like his specials are just like. His specials kind of remind me of like the early days of Kanye when he used to get on stage and do those amazing like streams of consciousness rants. You just want to hear him speak about this amazing, inspiring stuff he's thinking of and whatnot. And I think Chappelle's the same. So why is Chappelle, so why is Schultz not as likable of Chappelle? He's just more insufferable. Maybe, isn't it? He's just got that kind of attitude. He's just hard to kind of like and get on with. He's got that kind of smarmy face kind of thing going. But yeah, it's odd. Um, Schultz hates Seinfeld. Okay, Seinfeld's the one he hates. Okay, cool. Which makes sense because of his new haircut. <laughs> Who said that? Of course, as I said, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> which makes sense. He's like, yeah, Schultz hates Seinfeld, which makes sense because of his new haircut. And I'm sure Seinfeld doesn't have much time for Schultz either because of said haircut. <laughs> um. It's on Jerry. Joe mentioned Schultz on his podcast. Chappelle didn't give one fuck. Um, wasn't Schultz on the comic Chappelle 50 baby? I don't know, really, mate. True. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Duolingo, yeah, that, that, those Duolingo reminders, isn't it? It's a it's a good day to start language learning. Um, Schultz's wife tells people to people he's she's in. 
Brandon, are you are you joking? Please tell me you're joking. Schultz tells Schultz's wife tells people she's in an interracial relationship. <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> she said that. Uh, 